I am going to start with a meeting I had on January 5th. I was briefed by then House Sergeant at Arms, Paul Irving, and U.S. Capitol Police Chief Sun. During the briefing, both Chief Sun and Mr. Irving provided assurances that the Capitol complex had comprehensive security and there was no active intelligence that groups would become violent at the Capitol during the certification of the electoral votes. I was later told by Chief Sund that his department did not have intelligence, that there would be an armed insurrection. Although we now know that there was in fact an intelligence report from his own department released on the third, which states, quote, unlike previous post-election protests, the targets of the pro-Trump supporters are not necessarily the counter protesters as they were previously, but rather Congress itself is the target on the 6th. As outlined above, there has been a worrisome call for protesters to come to these events armed, and there is the possibility that protesters may be inclined to become violent. This combined with stop the steals propensity to attract white supremacists, militia members, and others who actively promote violence may lead to a significantly dangerous situation for law enforcement and the general public alike." End quote. But even putting the Capitol Police intelligence assessment aside, how could the security planning, policies, and procedures apparently be so lacking and ill-prepared? This event was widely promoted on social media weeks in advance, and your own report specifically shows the department was monitoring these posts. There were numerous groups with a history of violence known to be planning to attend, and these groups were actively discussing their plans on social media. I, for one, am at a loss to understand how your intelligence report, and then later as the mob walked 16 blocks, growing in size and aggressive demeanor, failed to impact the Capitol Police Force security posture. I also would like the panel to address the failures regarding command and control and communication. I have spoken to many officers who felt that on that day of the attack, they were left alone and unsure how to respond. How did command and control break down so quickly? What needs to be changed? It has been widely reported that senior leadership was not reachable, nor providing direction to the officers. Is that true? We have also been told that there was not a clear understanding of the rules of engagement and the level of force that officers were expected to use as the attack unfolded. How could that have happened? Once the Capitol was breached, was there a strategic plan to secure the building? Now I look forward, I hope you can provide updates to the committee as to how the Capitol Police and Sergeant at Arms are currently protecting the campus and its workforce, and to talk about the next steps to ensure the future physical safety of our campus. We need to know what you think are the major institutional and cultural reforms and or overhauls needed to maintain as safe and as open a campus as possible so that the visitors from across the country and around the world can witness representative democracy in action. I look forward to your answers to these questions and more. I want you to know that we are very thankful for your service and that of the staff of your organizations who work so hard to make this house run.